to have a cure. You don't want to wait until you have something and then have to try to treat it. It's much better the other way around. My mother-in-law's sister died of breast cancer years ago. My grandmother is a breast cancer survivor. Uh, yes, I do know people who have breast cancer. My mom had it. Uh, two of my co-workers had it. I am a breast cancer survivor myself, and I know uh, a friend of mine also has, has had breast cancer. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in August of 2007. I was very surprised that breast cancer can affect women of all ages, both young and old. Um, it's non-discriminatory. It affects everyone. I don't think there's one friend that I have that hasn't had an experience with someone who has breast cancer. What I know is that about how my family's been affected by it. Um, my grandmother had breast cancer and my mom's a breast cancer survivor. So I learned on a personal level how it affects um, someone's feelings, someone's self-esteem, someone's family. Well, I, to tell you the truth, I always thought that breast cancer was, um, had to do with deodorant. I would say, um, genetically, that it would be in your genes. I definitely think that you have some sort of genetic disposition, and I also think that the environment in which you grow up uh, plays an effect as well. Well, I always thought it was genetics or unhealthy living. Yeah. Why are all these women getting breast cancer? What a good question. We really don't know. Uh, we have some information about 15% of cases, but 85% of cases have no risk factor except that you're a woman. So it really remains quite a mystery what's causing the vast majority of breast cancer. As a breast cancer surgeon and as a healthcare leader, answering this question would be very important to me personally uh, because I can see that uh, many lives could be saved. I think the single most interesting and promising area of research into the causes of breast cancer have to do with the human mammary tumor virus, a virus which appears to be very similar to the mouse mammary tumor virus and which some scientists believe may be responsible for a significant portion of human breast cancer. I first discovered the virus quite accidentally uh, when a colleague of mine, Dr. Ken Blank, asked me if I wanted to take a look at a handout that he had received in New York City uh, for a summary of the San Antonio Breast Cancer Conference. And I said, sure, you know, great idea, I'd love to take a look at it. And I took it home and I was looking through the uh, presentations and the uh, slides and there were two slides that I noticed presented by a Dr. Holland uh, talking about his research on a virus. And I was really surprised because I had never ever thought that a virus might be involved in breast cancer. Um, and I had considered myself to be fairly well informed, uh, having all of the breast cancer textbooks and going to various conferences and so forth. So I went to my medical librarian and I asked her to pull the paper uh, that Dr. Holland had presented. And I said to her, uh, while you're at it, um, take a look to see if there is any other literature on this virus, uh, thinking that, oh, this was relatively new and maybe there were just one or two other papers that had been published. And uh, the next day, uh, the librarian uh, showed up with a huge stack of papers uh, that had been published over the past 60 years. And I was shocked. I took them home and I started to go through them. And the more I read, the more surprised I was to learn that this virus had been discovered in 1935 and that there were literally hundreds 
of research papers that had been published on the virus. And yet, this material had not made it into mainstream breast cancer literature. The Pink Virus Project is the first major initiative of the Breast Health and Healing Foundation that I founded uh, in 2008 to focus more attention on finding the causes of breast cancer. Uh, the Pink Virus Project is a collaborative effort uh, among uh, researchers and other collaborators um, to really answer the question, does a virus cause breast cancer in women? The goal of the Pink Virus Project is to answer this question within five years. No, that's the first time I ever heard that, and I always read on anything about that. I never heard of virus, you know, from mice. It's the yeah, first it's I heard it. I'm actually a nursing student, and she is a nurse, <laughs> and we both never heard that a virus may possibly cause breast cancer. Until I became Dr. Reddy's patient, I did not know anything about a virus. I never even thought about it. So hearing it from her and her research was how I became aware of the fact that it could possibly be a virus. We have not gotten enough evidence yet to be able to prove that the virus causes breast cancer, but there is compelling and more importantly, convergence of data. That is, we have different scientists working in different countries, in different laboratories, and they're all coming up with the same sort of results which suggest that a large portion of breast cancer may be related to a virus. So worldwide, what impact would this have on the numbers? And really, if 40% of breast cancer is caused by the virus and there are 1.4 million new cases of breast cancer, okay, we're talking about 500,000 new cases of breast cancer a year caused by a virus. That's a half a million new cases. And if the mortality rate is, is 50%, okay, so that's 250,000 unnecessary deaths per year. This is not a small number.